Shalom. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh, by Hashem, Hashem, by Hashem, by Hashem, by Hashem, and double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and peace, blessings, and citations to the whole Volet. And, um, yeah, um, I just came across this article. Um, it was basically a day ago, and, um, or shall I say, a couple hours ago, shall I say. Um, it says UK weather four days of thunderstorms to bring more danger and not relief after country scorched on the weekend of wildfires. And yeah, man, this is how we watch him, how we share visiting the earth that he made, man. And um, I'm just gonna quickly read through the article just to cut everything out. I'm just gonna pull it on reader mode. <clears throat> man, it says, um, the UK is braced for several days of thunderstorms after a hot weekend which saw parts of the country grapple with wildfires but the change in weather is likely to bring more danger rather than relief. Meta, um, oh meteor, wait what? Meteor, meteorologists have warned a lack of rain and high temperatures have caused drought conditions which have turned much of the country's landscape from green to brown and yellow. An amber heat warning remained in place on Sunday as temperatures stayed north of 30 degrees Celsius in parts of the UK. It says significant fires have been reported in parts of London, Kent and Essex over the, the past two days. And it's not just over here, it's, it's all over the world, man. Literally, I literally heard on the radio, man, today. That um <clears throat> over there in Egypt, that um that a church got set on fire, and I think like forty one people died in the fire. That's that's mad. All because of um faulty air conditioning, but we know it was the whole bunch my whole share. And <clears throat> yeah, I'll get the scriptures after um I'll just quickly run through this. <clears throat> that's if the spirit doesn't um you know. Drag me to the scriptures. <laughs> but um <clears throat> carrying on it says um over the past two days while the weather has also resulted in incidents over of people getting into difficulty while swimming in lakes, rivers and the sea. And yeah man, people have been dying <coughs> while trying to stay cool. They've been dying in um in the in the lakes, rivers and sea. I've I've seen Many news articles on children dying in lakes and in rivers, basically being pulled down to the bottom and they've been found at the bottom of the of the lake, not breathing. <coughs> and it's his judgment, man. And it all ties in with um Ecclesiasticus, um I think it's thirty nine and twenty eight. <coughs> or you could read um thirty nine and twenty seven. Lucky for the coffin. Uh, and it says, small billows by road as fire rages in Kent. And that's basically, it's a video, but <coughs> it's going to be a thumbnail since it's in reader mode. It says, fire and rescue services have been tackling an enormous numbers, number of wildfires around the country, especially in the southeast, where there has been little rain <coughs> at all since January. One of Sunday's major blazes at Busby Country Park near King's Lynn, Norfolk, have been blamed on a disposable barbecue being thrown into woodland, resulting in the arrest of two men on suspicion of arson. And it says several services have described the recent demand as un unprecedented, with Dorset reporting that during the first 10 days of August, it attended 180 wildfires compared to just 34 last year. And yeah, this is the, this, oh, this damn dog, man, he's barking all the time. Um, so like, yeah, um, now I've lost my train of thought. Um, oh yeah, that's what I was going to say. And the reason why last year, reason why <laughs> last year was, um, 34 and this year is 180. Is because this year is um is basically surnamed 
the turn the turn up of Yahweh Shem Hashem, and Yahweh Shem Hashem is turning up, man. It's turning up on these judgments, <coughs> and the four days of thunderstorms expected next week are not likely to offer much relief. <coughs> Instead, the driest conditions in almost fifty years, which have water levels in reservoirs visibly low lower, and drought officially declared in eight areas of England on Saturday, may lead to flooding. <coughs> That's beautiful, man. And I found a little video, basically, um. It basically describes or shows what happens after um, after these drought conditions when water basically gets poured into the dirt. <clears throat> but I'll get that after I quickly run through this. Abarat is And it says the thunderstorms are likely to bring significant rainfall, but it may be too much too soon. Geographers and meteorologists say that the best type of rain to bring the earth out of its parched state would be a light drizzle well hopefully it's not a light drizzle <clears throat> instead of soaking into the base ground the downpours that are expected could lead to large amounts of, of surface runoff potentially causing sudden flooding and even power cuts a beautiful man the Met office has warned power cuts you know once it's Oh, I really want to jump into the scriptures right now, but, you know what, let me just get the, <clears throat> and this is Exodus 10 and 21, and it says, and the, and the Lord said unto Moses, stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. Not only that, but the Lord said, um, the Lord was going to smite the earth with plagues as before, man. Second Edges 15 and 11. But I will bring them with a mighty hand, and I stretch my arm, and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and destroy all the land thereof. So the same place that the Lord used over there in actual Egypt, the Lord's going to do it again, man. <coughs> and we know that um, the blackouts is basically the darkness. And we know that it says um, that the fountain shall stand still as well. And this water, this water is, um, it's needed for the power stations. And without the water, and if they do stand still, then these power stations won't be able to generate electricity to supply the grid. So yeah, man, I expect blackouts very soon. It says, and um, this is second hundred six and twenty four. It says, at that time shall friends fight one against another like enemies, and the earth shall stand in fear with those that dwell therein. The springs of the fountain shall stand still, and in three hours they shall not run. <coughs> so yeah, that's going into the water, man. But well, carrying on, it says, um, <clears throat> it says, thunderstorm warnings in place to start the week. It says, Met Office forecaster Dan Stroud explained that the rain from really intense downpours will be unable to soak into the baked ground quickly. It's very difficult for the water to actually get in because it has to force the air out of the soil. So dry ground gets very quickly overwhelmed and <clears throat> we then get surface runoff, he added. And that's what's going to cause the flooding. And it says, um, the Met Office has issued yellow warnings about the thunderstorms, saying they could cause significant disruption on Monday across all but the most northern parts of the UK. <laughs> yeah, and that's, a, that's another thing as well. <clears throat> I ain't told no one this, but... um. Yeah, yesterday I was out there in my garden, in my back garden, and um, basically what happened was I was talking to the Lord and the chariots were flying in the heavens. <coughs> and I don't know why I asked this, but I did. I basically asked, um, I basically asked the Lord, Yehovah Shemah Shai, if he's going to, um, basically collapse 
the economy this year and I asked if he could show me three um I call them shooting star chariots because um it's those chariots that fly really fast and they just, they just shoot across the heavens <clears throat> I asked the Lord to show me three of those if he's going to do it and um behold um I saw three man Three, three chariots literally zipped right over my head. And I, I, was, I, was, I was astounded and shocked at what I saw, man. And this, is, this, this, this requires a lot of faith to even, to even bring out, man. Because this is like prophetic, prophetic stuff. And I'm just but a man, a, a humble servant. And the Lord basically revealed this to me. And it's only through faith that I'm saying this right now. <clears throat> because I was literally having a hard time even thinking about even mentioning this to anyone. <clears throat> I don't know, man, because like these doubt demons started coming up coming on me and then these thoughts of being um what if it doesn't happen? Then the people are gonna say I'm a false prophet and then that's gonna mess me up. But <clears throat> in these times, we need to have faith in Yahweh Hashem Hashem man. And if the Lord show me those signs, and show me the signs that I asked for, then I'm gonna believe, man. I'm I'm, I'm gonna believe. <coughs> and it says, um, where was I? <clears throat> it says spray and sudden sudden flooding could lead to difficult driving conditions and some road. Closures, it said. This is a small chance that homes and businesses could be flooded quickly with damage to some buildings from flood water, lightning strikes, hail, and strong winds. Hell, you know. <coughs> oh, yo, that reminds me of that description, man. <coughs> it says, where flooding or lightning strikes occur, there is a chance of delays and some cancellations to train and bus services. This is a slight chance that power cuts could occur and other services to some homes and businesses could be lost. The yellow warning for thunderstorms will drop south throughout the week, affecting just England on Tuesday. And then the very south of England on Wednesday. <coughs> and um, like I was saying, um, I searched this. And... Um, Wonder where that article's gone. But yeah, let me just quickly read this. It says floods have a large social consequences for communities and individuals, as most people are well aware. <clears throat> the immediate impacts of flooding include loss of human life, it damage to property, destruction of crops. Going in, yo, this could very well lead to <clears throat> the final blow to famine. The crops that these farmers have. They could be lost. Well, if it does flood, then yeah, they will be lost. And it says loss of livestock. So, yeah, man, this is this will contribute to famine too, and a deterioration of health conditions, owing <clears throat> owing to waterborne diseases. Wow, and that's pestilences, man. <coughs> There's so much, and this is basically what happens. This is basically what happens. <clears throat> when there's a drought and it rains heavily so you got the wet grass the normal summer and then after the heat wave and look what happens man <coughs> yeah and there's no sound to this video so you see the wet grass is taking it all in the normal summer is taking it in but slowly and after the heat wave it's literally doing nothing it's it's not even soaking into the ground, so <clears throat> when these, when the Lord brings these thunderstorms and this heavy rain, guess what? Flooding. Well, there was one bubble, but <clears throat> as you can see, man, if there's a lot of water, the ground isn't gonna be able to soak it all up. <coughs> so yeah, man, we've I've only literally seen one bubble for after the heat wave, just one. 
Wait, there, there goes another phone. So now we're starting to understand why it's going to flood. And yeah, man. Now we know why it's going to flood, man. But yeah, let me quickly go get the scriptures, man. <coughs> This is Isaiah 29 and 6 and it says thou shalt be visited of the Lord of hosts with thunder and with earthquake and great noise with storm and tempest and a flame of devouring firemen <coughs> <coughs> and I can't forget to go to um I think it's in Nahum Um, yeah, here we go. <clears throat> Nahum 1 and 3. And it says, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power, and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm, and the clouds are the dust of his feet. <clears throat> and that's another thing, man. It talks about the water. And that's mentioned in, um, in Ecclesiasticus, man. It's a part of... Um, the Lord executing judgment, man. No, I think it's 39 and... Yeah. Here we go, here we go, here we go. Yeah, and this is Ecclesiasticus 39 <clears throat> and 26. It says the principal things for the whole use of a man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt. And remember... <clears throat> it mentioned the floods. Fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil and clothing. It says, All these things are for good to the godly, so to the sinners they are turned into evil. So, the water, the, these floods that are about to come over here in England, this is judgment, man. <clears throat> this is judgment. And the Lord is going to destroy the, destroy the crops, man. <clears throat> Not only that, destroy people's properties. People are already having a hard time with money. And not only that, <clears throat> it's lucky. If these crops are destroyed, that means the prices, the prices of food is going to increase. Why? Because there's <clears throat> going to be a scarcity. The less of the less of something there is, the more expensive it is, man. For example, these precious stones. <clears throat> like when people find precious stones, they're so expensive. They're so expensive. Because there's not enough of them. And it says, um, <clears throat> there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in their fury lay on sword strokes. In the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hail and famine and death, all these were created for vengeance. That's beautiful, man. Call Lord Yahweh, but how shy, man. Let me go. Let me scroll down. Let me scroll down. Where is it gone, man? Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> there is a small chance that homes and businesses could be flooded quickly. We've damaged to some buildings from flood water, lightning strikes, hail, and strong winds. All praises to Yahweh, but how shy, man. Let me read this again, man. Let me start from 27 again, man, because this is beautiful. All these things are... <clears throat> no, actually, let me start from 26. The principal things for the whole use of a man's life are water, fire, iron, and salt, flour of wheat, honey, milk, and the blood of the grape, and oil and clothing. All these things are for good to the godly. So, so the sinners, they are turned into evil. <clears throat> there be spirits that are created for vengeance, which in a fury lay on sore strokes. In the, time of, in the time of destruction, they pour out their force and appease the wrath of him that made them. Fire and hail and famine and death. All these were created for vengeance. Teeth of wild beasts and scorpions, serpents and the sword. Punishing the wicked to destruction, man. And what did the Lord say in um, <clears throat> Nahum 1 and verse 3? He will not acquit the wicked. 
He's not going to allow them to get away with what they've done, man. They're going to have to pay for their iniquity. And it says, they shall rejoice in this commandment. And they shall be ready upon earth when need is. And when their time is come, they shall not transgress his word, man. All praise to Jehovah, Shemah, Hoshai, man. And I, can't, I can't forget this, man. The Lord visiting the earth. Hopefully that's about that, right? <coughs> he answers second address 9 and 1 and it says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs pass, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Therefore, when there will be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, <clears throat> then shalt thou well understand that the Most High spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. For like as, <clears throat> for like as all that is made in the world have a beginning and an end, and the end is manifest, and that's true, man. The end is manifest. We're literally seeing it all take place. And it says, even so, the times also of the highest have plain beginnings in wonder and powerful works and endings in effects and signs. And yeah, man, that was a marvellous sign that the Lord showed me when I was out there. <coughs> Asking when um when he's going to basically destroy the economy. I, I basically asked him, um, is he going to destroy the economy this year? And the Lord, the Lord sent those three chariots, man, to fly over my head. <coughs> and that's literally what I asked for. I asked the Lord to send three chariots to fly over my head, man. At, at high speeds. And I, and I kid you not. One after the other, they came. One, two, three over my head, man. <coughs> and yeah, man. The Lord is visiting this earth which he made, man. And he's going to execute judgment. And only that is... He will show signs to his elect. <coughs> and yeah, man. I might as well keep reading. <coughs> and it says, um, And everyone that shall be saved shall be able to escape for by his works and by faith, whereby ye have believed, shall be preserved from the said perils and shall seed my salvation in my land and within my borders. I have sanctified them for me from the beginning. <coughs> and yeah, man. Oh, I might as well keep reading. Because this is basically for um, those two fairs, man. That don't want to hearken unto the voice of the prophets or the mouthpieces of the prophets. But do despise them. <coughs> and it says, um, Then shall they be in pitiful case, which now have abused my ways. And they that have cast them away despitefully shall dwell in torment. And yeah, man, those Israelites over here in the UK that rejected the word, they're, they're going to they're gonna receive of these judgments, man. They're going to receive of these judgments and they're not going to be able to escape them. <clears throat> and it's fitting because... um. Yeah, I'm talking about the UK when I say these judgments. Because um, like it says, the thunderstorm is in the UK or in England. But yeah, um for such as in their life have received benefits and have not known me. And yeah, man, Jake would um would get a new house or a car or stumble upon some money. <clears throat> they'll be like they'll be like thank god thank god <clears throat> but really it's just they're just honoring the lord with their mouth <clears throat> and it says and they that have loathed my law while they had yet liberty and when as yet a place of repentance was opened unto them understood not but despised it the same must know it after death by pain and it says, um, and therefore be thou not curious how the ungodly shall be punished, and when, but inquire how the righteous shall be saved, whose the world is, and for whom the world is created. <clears throat> then answered I and said, I said before, and now do you speak, and will speak it also hereafter. 
that there be many more of them which perish than, a, than of them which shall be saved. Like as a wave is greater than a drop. And that's basically a ratio right there. And for, um, hmm, where is it? Basically it says, um, <clears throat> let the multitude perish. I was born in vain. Yeah, here we go. <clears throat> this is second Corinthians nine and twenty-two. It says, "Let the multitude perish, then, which was born in vain, and let my great be kept and my plant, for with great labor have I made it perfect." <clears throat> so yeah, man, these two thirds are gonna be cut off, like it makes mention of um the measurement or the fraction. A third shall be saved, and left therein, but the but the <clears throat> the two thirds shall be. Cut off and die. Oh, and I, I can't, I can't forget this. Um, for the longest time, I couldn't even find the scripture. But today, while I was thinking about doing this lesson, I came up, I came across it, man. And this is Jude one and five, and it says, "I would therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved thee." Have having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believed not. And yeah, man, that's why these two thirds are gonna be destroyed. Because they don't believe in the word. And let's see how long their ears are going to be covered. Uh, where is it? There we go. <clears throat> and I think I should start at... Yeah, Isaiah 6 and 9 and it says... Actually, now let me start at 8. It says, Also I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Then said I, Here I am, send me. And he said, Go and tell this people, Hear ye indeed, but understand not. And see ye indeed, but perceive not. Make the heart of this people fat, And make their ears heavy, And shut their eyes, At least they, at least they see with their eyes, And hear with their, with their ears, And understand with their heart, and convert and be healed. And you see the Lord doesn't want us to be convert and be healed. They're probably too far gone. They're probably too far gone, man. They can't they can't be saved by changing their minds. They just have to be destroyed. And it says, um, then said I, Lord, how long? And he answered, Until the cities be wasted without an inhabitant, and the houses without man, and the land be utterly desolate. Yeah, man, and that's the, that's the nuclear destruction right there. <clears throat> Those two thirds in the land of Babylon, and they're going to be turned into ashes along with the land. They're going to become part of the desert. <laughs> but yeah, man, um, I don't know. Um, this one scripture keeps popping into my head, and I don't know why, but I think I should get it. I think it's in um, Psalms 147. Don't know which verse, but yeah, there we go. Verse 11. This is Psalms 147 and 11. And this is basically to their let. Um, yeah, man. It says, The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him. In those that hope in his mercy. So yeah man. Like it says. The Lord takes pleasure. Actually let me look at that, that, that word. Pleasure. It 
So it basically goes into happiness, delight, joy, gladness. <laughs> and it's fun. that's funny, you know. It says rapture. And we know that the elect are going to be beamed up and actually saved. Um, it says um, they shall scarcely be saved. And I might as well get it because um, someone new might be watching and I might want to know where that is. Yeah, it's First Peter 4 and 18 and it says, And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? <clears throat> so yeah, man. We're going to scarcely be saved. So you have to hold integrity and your belief in your house somehow shall all the way up into the end, man. And um yeah, then there's another one I wanted to get, which is in the Psalms. I think it's in Psalms 34. Don't know what verse, but I'll probably find it. Um, I might as well read verse 7. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. And yeah, man, the chariots, the outside my house every day, man. I can just literally just step out into my garden and look up and there's a chariot just, just chilling there. And they literally go around my house, but very slowly. <clears throat> and it says, um, let me see if I can find the other scripture that I wanted. Oh yeah, there we go. There we go. Hmm, there's actually a lot I can read from here. I think I can read from um hmm. Yeah, I'll read from 14, Psalm 34 and 14, I'll read on down. It says, depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous and his ears are open unto their cry. So yeah, man, in the time of affliction, call out unto Yahweh Hashem HaOshai, man. Because, um... Yeah, here we go, Ecclesiasticus 2 and 11. It says, For the Lord is full of compassion and mercy, long-suffering and very pitiful, and forgiveth sins and saveth in a time of affliction. So yeah, man. So like it says, and his ears are open unto their cry. So in the time of your affliction, call upon the Lord, man. Don't try and do it by yourself. And it says, um, The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. Wow. The righteous cry and the Lord heareth and delivereth them out of all their troubles. It's, that's beautiful, man. That is beautiful. <clears throat> it says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and saveth such as be of a contrite spirit. And yeah, man, and that's the meek, the elect, man. Because what does it say? It says, um, the meek shall inherit the earth. Yes, it's Psalms 37 and 11 says, But the meek shall inherit the earth and shall delight themselves in the abundance of peace. And then Matthew 5 and 5, Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. And let me look into that word meek. Patient, long suffering, forbearing. <clears throat> Yeah, man. And basically, the, the lowly. And carrying on. Um, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. And this is basically the Lord basically saying, turn to him, man. If you're going, if you're going through something right now, turn to the Lord, man. 
the Lord said he will hear the cry of the righteous. So cry unto the Lord and put your trust in him and then believe in him. It says he keepeth all his bones and not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked and they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. All praise to Jehovah Shem Shaiman, the righteous judge. It says the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. And that's beautiful, man. And that's why we got to trust in Yahweh Hashem HaShai. I know I was talking about um, <laughs> the thunderstorms and um, <clears throat> the flooding, the basically the destroying of the crops and stuff like that. But the Lord had it that I go into this. Like, like I was saying, man, that, that scripture was in my head, man. It just kept popping up. He wouldn't go. Psalms 147 and I think 11. Let me quickly check. Yeah, man. The Lord taketh pleasure in them that fear him, in those that hope in his mercy, man. <laughs> but yeah, I think I've been talking for too long. So I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh Bashim Haushai, Bashim Rakadash. And double honors to the houses and apostles of Great Millstone who told me the truth. And peace, blessings, and citations to the hopeful elect. And shalom, man.